service level agreement. Um, I guess I forgot to ask um, just by show of hands, um, I'm giving away what SLA means here, uh, but with SLO and SLI, um, those two are probably a little bit more obscure. So I'm wondering just by raise of hands and no need to um, unmute and give an answer. Um, want to see how many people are familiar with the terms SLO and SLI. So we've got a couple of hands. Yeah, just have your hand up if SLO or SLI, if you're familiar with that is. All right, go ahead and put your hands down. Um, so a couple of people are familiar, but um, not everyone. So, but yeah, that's what we're getting into. Um, so it'll be important to kind of see what the distinction is uh, because they can be a little confusing in your head. So the best way to think about it, SLA here, um, this is more of the customer facing agreement. It's uh, more external. This doesn't have to be external to your company. For example, at Facebook working in data infra, um, our customers were internal. Uh, Facebook does its own uh, data management, data mining. We have our own um, uh, Facebook has its own data engineers and data scientists and all that stuff. Um, so our customers were internal, other software engineers or data scientists. Um, but basically we have this uh, promise with them um, or if it's external, sometimes it's contractual that, okay, our service is going to meet this reliability, this availability, these expectations. We'll go through an example of what this all means in just a minute here. Uh, this is important because uh, if you want people to actually um, use your service, if you want to have impact, um, and this is a, a big thing for FANG companies. A lot of the time your services will be internal customers. Um, if you want your service to be impactful, you need to be able to guarantee certain behaviors and you need to be ensure that your service is responsible for meeting those guarantees. But you do have to be careful how you measure it, especially if it's external customers paying money. Uh, because they will expect that their money is well spent and you want to retain those customers. So this is SLO, SLO service level objective. Um, again, a little hard to see this from the name itself, but service level objective is more the internal facing. So it's like SLA, but instead of being external to customers, it's internal to the service itself. Uh, and this is what you're trying the... Um, the reliability you're trying to hit with your service. Um, this can often be tighter than the SLA uh, because you want to measure if you're breaching the SLO before you're breaching any contractual obligation with customers. So this uh, SLO is going to be specific, measurable, uh, more white box uh, because SLO will focus more on the internals of the system, um, but it will overlap with the SLA quite a bit too. Uh, your customers don't care about the internals of your system. So the SLA is not really going to say, okay, well, the latency of a specific component doing the whole picture, they don't care in the SLA. In the SLO, maybe you do care. Um, and this will also define your strategy for alerting. It's very important that you have an SLO uh, so that when you design alerts, you can actually be alerted on whether or not that SLO is impacted as opposed to having a bunch of noisy alerts that just kind of whack-a-mole hit different um, random areas that could possibly be failing, but may or may not need to be looked into. Um, and yeah, we said we can go into an example. This brings us to SLI. So this is the last acronym here. Um, the way to think about this is um, if you have a dial like in your uh, if you have a car, the dashboard has kilometers per hour or something like that. Get my camera again. So if you have a speedometer in your car, um, kilometers per hour could be what that dial is measuring. Um, and that would be the SLI. The SLI is just that metric, the kilometers per hour. The SLO would be a specific threshold that you are placing. Like, okay, when I am going over 150 kilometers per hour, um, fire an alert. Um, like perhaps your SLO is, uh, we will keep our driving safe and well below 150 kilometers per hour or below 120 to be even safer. Um, this isn't the, uh, the Autobahn 
but the SLO is the threshold. Um, that is the, the, the objective that you're trying to maintain either over or under or at sometimes. The SLI is the metric itself that you have chosen. Um, so if we choose kilometers per hour as our metric that we're gonna measure and we set the SLO to be 120 kilometers per hour, um, then the SLI is the, the metric itself, the dial, the kilometers per hour, the SLO is the threshold. So that's, that's the difference. Um, and hopefully that'll be a little bit easier to think about it and remember. Um, but you wanna pick a few SLIs to build um, your, to, to set an SLO on to build your alerting strategy. So uh, we'll go through an example of this to help define this in more concrete terms. Um, so there's a table uh, from the Google SRE book, which I will pull up. So so down here in the appendix, and this is just because I'm lazy. I don't want to pull out the calculator. Excuse me. Um, I don't want to pull out the calculator and do all of the math. And so availability table in the appendix of the Google SRE book, they just conveniently have um, all these numbers for if you set an availability level and what the unavailability is. So what is that? If we have, um, like we said here, 99.9% .9 availability, if that's going to be our SLO, um, which is very vaguely defined, we need to get more specific. Um, what does this actually translate to? So it would be unavailable per year, eight hours. Per quarter, it'd be unavailable for two hours. Uh, 43 minutes per month, 10 minutes per week. Um, so that's fairly tight. But obviously, that 0.1%, depending on what your service is, if all of those 8.76 hours happened at the same time, even if it was just once a year, um, that would probably be really bad, depending on, on your service. If it's down for that long, that's, um, you know, Facebook having an outage for eight hours, uh, major outage, and you know this has happened. Uh, some of you are probably aware uh, that's really bad. And so, ninety nine point nine percent availability might not be good enough, um, or it has to be more strictly defined so that it applies per quarter or per month or um, even just per day. Um, and so, really depends on the service because some services, I mean, even just one point four four minutes per day. Um, I mean, if your service fails, um, if you're getting millions of requests and almost two minutes every day, some of those requests fail, well, what happens to them? Are those important requests? Do, do they get retried? Um, are you possibly losing money and how much money with that failure? So that's why we're thinking about, okay, specifically defining the SLO. Um, so think about what the SLA would look like in this case. Um, and what indicators should we try to use? And what is our error budget? Um, what does that mean? I'll, I'll go ahead and define that too. So for the purpose of this example, um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's suppose a, a service that, um, so your company um, owns financial services basically to where you your customers are retail shop owners, could be small shops, could be larger shops, Basically, your customers um, are shops themselves. They sell merchandise. They sell whatever they want. Um, so their customers will swipe a credit card, and that transaction information will go to your company's services, and that will process all of that information, take care of that, and return the result of like, okay, transaction complete. Money was transferred. We're good to go. So we set that up. Now, since we own these financial services, um, these requests are really important. This is actual money that's being transferred and we need to be careful with it. And we need to make sure that our customers um, have high availability with our service because throwing money around, if, if they can't process credit card transactions, then they could be losing money. And then we'll also be losing money or we'll be suffering, struggling SLA wise. They're paying us so that they can get their money. So with that, setting the context there and the importance. Let's think about, okay, well, what is the SLA? 
Um, it could be a little tighter than the SLO. Um, in fact, um, imagine if the SLA, oh, sorry, the SLO is usually tighter. The SLA could be a little bit looser, maybe. Um, so imagine if the SLA were 99.5%. Now let's go back to the reliability table. So if we contractually guarantee um, our services will be available to you 99.5% of the time. Well, what does time mean? Are we talking about a year? Because that means that almost two days out of the year, we could be completely down and they couldn't call us out on you broke contract because, oh, we said 99.5% of the time we'd be up. Well, what if these two days fell on a um, like uh, Black Friday or something like that, just some holiday where there's a lot of spending happening? Um, if we're just completely down during that time. They can't make any sales. Uh, they lose out on a lot of business on the busiest day of the year. But are we supposed to say, oh, well, our contract said, um, no, that's a very terrible way to define the SLA or the SLO. And so if we break it down to something more like, okay, it, it would be only unavailable uh, seven minutes per day. That's still a lot of time. There's a lot of missed transactions that could happen in seven minutes. It's a lot of customers lined up at the register who might just be like, ah, I don't have time for this and, and leave without buying anything. Mm -hmm.